Hello everybody and welcome back to A-Hole Design. We begin with number 19, Telegram paywalling basic privacy features, pay to restrict messages to contacts only, and still have random premium members messaging you. Who can send me messages? Everybody, or nope, you don't get another option unless you pay to be a premium user and even then. <laughs> They can, other people or premium users can still send you random messages. I've never used this before, so I don't know. Is there a directory that you can just crawl in order to be able to find anyone and everyone who's a user on the app? So any spam bot scam can just go and send messages to anyone they would like other than the premium users. So the spam bots are just going to become premium users so they can message anyone in the world unrestricted with all of the good, convenient, helpful things that Spam bots send messages for. How exciting. Bought this set to make my own coping saw. What's a coping saw? Is it to, like, cut pool coping? It's for skateboarding, that's what it is. You gotta cut the coping so you can lay that, that sick coping on the half pipe or the pool or whatever. I support this. Got it today, and there weren't plans for the construction included. They have them on their site, but you have to sign up for their marketing emails to get them. So, huh? They don't include instructions in the thing that you purchased. That's like a that's a weird choice in whatever meeting they had as a company. Like, yeah, have you thought about we're not getting enough signups to our promotional emails. So what if we just take the actual customers who are ordering our products and we don't tell them how to put it together? <laughs> and then we force them. The only way you're actually going to know how to use our product is if you sign up for the marketing emails, you know? I feel like it would be better if they just, like, I don't want to give advice, but it'd be better to just do some sort of sneaky, deceptive checkbox for the marketing emails. Like, check this box if you do not want to receive our marketing emails, and they'd probably have better luck that way. They might still end up on the subreddit, but at least people would know how to assemble the product. Trying to make a delivery must read two legal documents first. And to access the door code is valid from midnight to blah. Door code below to get in. When you arrive, tack the black lens on the latch. Enter your door code to unlock the door by using latch. You agree to latch terms of service and privacy policy. It's a message from someone I've shaken my desk. <laughs> this is a message from someone who ordered delivery and they just have a copy paste that they send everyone. God, that's annoying. Or is it just the building's policy and the building is like, hello, tenants, you must send any delivery drivers this message anytime you want a delivery. God, it reminds me, I, I lived in a condo for a year. This was about a decade ago. And the requirements that they had to be able to do like, and is kind of unrelated to this, but to be able to do any work, anything at all inside of your unit, like you need to have a repair thing done. You want to change the color of the paint on the wall or something like that. The amount of restrictions was unreal. Like you had to have, they had to have a particular kind of insurance with the building named on it. And like you had to prove this to the building. It had to have certain policies and stuff like that. They could only use the loading. It was, oh my God. No one actually, no one would want to do anything because the requirements were so stringent. So it's like, oh. Sometimes dealing with like HOAs and buildings and stuff is so annoying. Not sometimes, always, isn't it? When you're logged out, fandom inserts an unrelated autoplaying video into the page. When you scroll past it, it covers almost the entire screen. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're gonna, they're gonna autoplay videos. The part that's bad is and, and God, did I do a main channel video on this or was it part of a, another video? But you know, when the, when the videos, I think it was main channel video talking about how sites were embedding stuff, but the ads like weren't actually getting viewership from the people on the site, but the advertisers are paying for the ads to display. So maybe this is the way around it. It's like, hey, so uh, we got in a little bit of hot water for just kind of shoving the ads over in the corner. That wasn't really satisfying the criteria. So we'll just make sure it's really big. If it's really big, they won't miss the ad and then we won't get in trouble and we'll just make the users mad, but we won't get in trouble and we'll get the ads play. So let's go. Humble choice requires seven button pushes just to cancel a membership. On the plus side, you can cancel it online, I'm assuming, <laughs> which is better than a lot of places. 
But it's like, oh man, dude. It's sad that I, I thought Humble Bundle were super cool. And now I feel like we see them here every single month. Like what happened? I thought, thought everything was chill with Humble Bundle. Oh God, manage my membership, cancel membership. Warning, you will permanently lose your classic plan. It's gone forever. But stay and get a dollar off. Continue to cancel. What can we do better? Continue to cancel. Are you sure you want to cancel? Cancel. Yeah, this actually doesn't seem like that crazy different from a lot of other places when you're trying to cancel. And I, I, I will, I gotta give them credit on the wording on a lot of websites when you're trying to cancel your plan. They do really try to tug at your heartstrings. And sometimes you're like, oh God, I feel like I'm letting down a friend in canceling my membership that I'm not using at all and haven't used in months, but it's like, they're actually sad. I don't wanna make them sad. I gotta cancel, good Lord. This claimed I was a $20, this claimed I was a $20 gift card. Me, I'm only worth a $20 gift card, but after rubbing off the marker, it's 10. I'm only worth $10? Thought I was more valuable than that. $20 gift card, tell us how you feel and get rewarded. Is that actually allowed? Is it not against Amazon's term of service? Because I've seen this on numerous occasions where after you buy the product, they send you an email after the fact, they're like, if you do the review, we will give you a, a gift card. And I'm like, are you allowed? Is that not against policy? Like, you know, you're not getting unbiased reviews by doing this sort of thing. And then I have to not trust the reviews on products that I'm seeing to order because they might be getting gift cards for it. Ugh. Anyway, leave us an unbiased review and receive a, why, why even bother? Why why go over what was previously printed as 10 and like put a 20 there, but in a way that it can rub off? I mean, if you're gonna only give them $10, you could just still say $20 on the card and then they type the thing in and oh no, it's actually only a $10 gift card. Why like, why, have, I don't understand. Maybe it's that, well, they can say, no, 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 the card actually did say $10. We didn't lie. It just weird typo snafu. But you see it's $10, we didn't actually lie to you. So maybe it's like deniability on their end, but it just seems weird. <laughs> like <laughs> this has no impact on the code that actually happened, what happens on the PC. Like you can do, you can put whatever you want. This could be a, this could be $2 million gift card. And then you type it into the PC, it's $10, right? Why bother to go through this? I don't get it. Eleven Labs, a popular AI speech generator, decided to disable all free accounts for unusual activity while conveniently discounting paid subscriptions to convert the existing customers. Unusual activity detected. Free tier usage disabled. You flagged for unusual activity that means it's detected more than one free account on the same IP address? Huh? Like you, you can't have... Oh, it's like there's probably restrictions to how many things you can generate with a free account in a particular set of time. And so if you then create another account to get around it, it tracks the IP or something like that. But maybe that's not even what's happening here. They just were like, nope, no more free accounts. This is our excuse though, as to why uh, you gotta pay now because actually we looked at our business model and it turns out that generating um, this uh, AI uh, text-to-speech with really high quality voices um, it's actually really expensive for us to do every single time, but we're not charging you for it. And so as it turns out, this business model doesn't really work long-term. We were forced into it because other people were charging nothing and generating it for free. So we had to compete with them, but then we realized, holy frick, this is really expensive. And our investors are really mad because they're losing a lot of money if our growth doesn't keep up. And so we actually have to start uh, billing you for this. So, um, you're suspicious and here's a sale. Okay, please give us money. Cause this is really hard to sustain from a business standpoint. Oh God. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me choose changes to a terms of service. By clicking this link, you're agreeing as of April 3rd, 2024 to the new terms of service. If you don't formally accept these changes, you will be deemed to have agreed. I don't actually think that's how terms of service works. <laughs> or maybe it is. I mean, to be fair, Sites like YouTube, they update their terms of service, right? And after you've made your account, you don't you don't really ever have to go and then agree to a new thing. So maybe it does work like that. Maybe they didn't have to actually even notify you at all. So maybe they're doing more than they actually have to. Because obviously like YouTube's policies have changed in the last 14 years since I've started, but I've never had to re-agree. 
other than when it's like YouTube partner stuff and things. But yeah, maybe they're actually being nice. Only the top eggs have cool patterns. Thank God we only paid $5 for this. Only the top 72 count nested Easter eggs. I'm trying to see what's going on here. So I can like, wait, I'm getting confused by the nested terminology. Like, are they supposed to, do these all go inside of each other? Like you open one Easter egg and it's, oh, there's another Easter egg. You open the next one. God damn it, where's the candy? <laughs> I can never get to get to the candy. Okay, what it actually, oh, I see. It's like top, bottom, and they have a little, uh, little connecty thing between the two. Oh, so it's just a stack and only the top one has the design. <laughs> Wow, that's that really do be something. I guess you look at the side of the package and you're like, surely the, it's just, you're seeing a little edge, the bottom edge of the thing. Surely the design is still there. No, no, it's not. You can kind of see there though, is tipped to the side and then it doesn't actually have the design, but you'd be like, there's no way. There's no way they all don't look like what the packaging shows. That's, imp that's yeah, wow, okay. This ad for a phone cleaner app called Sweep Cleaner uses a fake iOS dialog box to make you think your photos will be deleted in one minute if you don't download their app. Ah, yes, my favorite when you <laughs> get like, you're doing whatever, you're trying to download the Minecraft map and you get the ad fly link and it does something like your browser is infected. If you do not install this, your PC will self-destruct in in 30 seconds. I'm like, I, you know, I was gonna say who falls for it. And then obviously it's just people who are old and don't know computers. And then they click on the thing because yeah, they want it to be like super duper, just as out there as possible in order to weed away the people who just aren't gonna fall for these things in order to only get the really, really, really gullible people to fall for it. So you're like, that's not what my uh, phone background looks like there. You're trying to make me think that I have an actual pop-up on my, on my phone, but I don't have, I don't have these uh, apps in this order. That's just not my home screen. Good try though. Good try. Full picture of the uncomfortable bus stop at the Royal Derby hospital. Is that a bench? <laughs> The worst bench I've ever seen in my life. Good God. How would you like to just sink between a couple of bars? We hope you've been doing your deadlifts and possibly had a procedure so that you have more surface area and, and cushion back there to be able to sit and not be in pain and or sink and just like turn into a V in between the bars on this thing. This is like actually nightmarish. Some child is going to like put their head through there and get it stuck and it's going to be a disaster. Just doesn't seem good at all. How Epson scams those who purchase a printer by forcing them to buy ink unnecessarily. Temporarily pr uh, printing with black ink because the feature is only available for approximately five days. Replace the expended ink cartridge as soon as possible. God, Rick, the worst. I had this with the freaking, I had an inkjet printer. The current one's not much better either in terms of having to sign into a freaking account to be able to use my printer if my internet is down. I wouldn't even be able to use the printer because it's just not gonna work. Oh, okay, anyway, we, we go on this tangent every time we are on A-hole design. But anyway, I had the, I put the previous inkjet printer and you run out of color and it won't let you print. It wouldn't even, it wouldn't even give me the five day grace period. It just wouldn't let you print in black and white. And I'm like, my black cartridge is 100% full, you idiot. I don't need the color. It's not like we're mixing all the CMYs to make black. That's not how this works. I could print black and white with just the black ink cartridge, you absolute fricks. Oh God. They're giving you a five day grace period now though. Isn't that nice of them? The background of this ATM obscures the fee. Do you wish to continue? The owner of this terminal, <laughs> owner, charges a fee of Mm, for cash withdrawals, this fee is in addition to any fee your financial institution may charge. Do they display it in white text in the middle of the supernova? <laughs> like, is this at a uh, casino? This looks like something at a casino. And you're gonna, you're like, uh, you're down big. And you've, you're a few drinks in and you're like, no, just one more bet. I just have to. I just have to double down on all of my losses and win the next hand. 
and then I'll be back to even. That's all I have to do. I'm I'm nine losses into my Martingale strategy. Consecutive losses. My tenth is surely gonna be a win. Give me my ATM money. Sure, take my ten dollar ATM fee on top of me withdrawing a thousand dollars because I'm ten levels deep into my Martingale. Don't gamble, folks. Don't gamble. My fifteen that that was not based on a true story either. I'm just just to clarify, just to clarify. Okay. My fifteen thousand dollar oscilloscope has a subscription for features which it already has. This seems very complicated. This oscilloscope comes with a one-time 30-day all-optional features trials license. You can see the start of the 30-day trial anytime. In addition, you could redeem individual option 30-day trial licenses anytime. But just keys side 30-day trial. This is some fancy-looking stuff right here. This beyond me. Uh, bro, this thing. You paid fifteen thousand dollars for this, and they're like, yeah, that's just the hardware. You gotta actually now pay uh, monthly in order for it to be able to do anything at all. So, yeah, sorry about that. I'm curious how much this monthly subscription is. It's probably also quite expensive, given all of the things that I absolutely cannot understand here. Oof, sorry about that. They're like, yeah, our clients are universities, and when they're presented with a bill, they just pay it, so we can do this. Steak and Shake Kiosk automatically applies all your rewards to go directly to the tip. SNS loyalty. Wait, so does it do like an automatic tip? You have like a loyalty thing that gives you a discount, but then it automatically applies a tip. So that basically if you weren't gonna tip because you're just grabbing food to go, you you don't you don't save anything. Hmm. Got it. I wonder if the tip actually goes to the workers or if this is like a pure just a display thing that would be allegedly quite probably illegal and i'm not actually making an accusation here because it should that'd be probably pretty pretty bad of a business to do but I'm, if it were just you know <laughs> just a visual thing like yeah because you're using the loyalty thing we're gonna automatically add a tip and then we're just gonna contribute your loyalty to cancel out the tip and the tip doesn't actually, it's just nothing. Poof, vanishes, workers don't get anything. That would be pretty bad. Now I'm not alleging that that's happening at all. I'm sure it isn't, but it would be pretty bad. Our time clock rounds to the next 15 minute interval for clock-in times. Rounded clock in 545, actual clock in 533. Now does your clock out time round to, to the lower 15 minute interval? Because that would be very interesting now, wouldn't it? Imagine clocking in at 5.31, and then you clock out at, you know, uh, uh, 8.29, and instead it shows you got in at 5.45 and left at 8.15. That would be quite something now, wouldn't it? I wonder if that's the case. I assume not, otherwise you probably would have included it, or you haven't checked that part. That seems iffy. Wendy's, like Ticketmaster, is planning to test dynamic pricing on their menu during busy periods in 2025. So arrive during a busy lunch or dinner rush, expect surge pricing on your food like it's Uber. Oh, we're just going straight to the uh, the, the CNN article here. Yeah, so they already were like, mm -mm, okay, we, we saw the backlash. We're not gonna do it. We changed our mind. You're, we were kidding. So it's not happening. However, when I heard about this, God, what an interesting concept because it's completely different from the reason why a company like Uber or Lyft would do it. The reason why you have surge pricing with Uber or Lyft is because there's high demand in an area. So by raising the pricing, you bring more drivers into that area by tempting them with higher pay in order to satisfy the demand that has ramped up in that place. Are they planning, were they, now that it's past tense, planning to bring in more workers than they would have otherwise, like a flex worker uh, scheduling so that during a surge period, they would tempt more workers in via higher prices that the customers are paying and the workers are actually rev sharing in this? No, probably not. It probably makes no difference. They're gonna staff the way that we're gonna staff. And sorry, this could be a whole video in and of itself because of how, in and of itself because of how weird and mind boggling it is. 
but like, it doesn't make sense when there's a fixed staffing at a single location and your flex pricing is not going to change how the food is made or how many workers there are at the place. It, like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. You're not accomplishing anything with this other than just trying to gouge. Turns out pure fat is zero calories if you just make it small enough. Uh, <laughs> nutrition facts, 473 servings per container. Serving size, a quarter of a second spray. Never actually seen a serving size measured in time before. Like this is probably a thing for spray bottles. I've just never looked at them. Uh, what is this though? Okay, it's an olive oil spray. Is that like a nonstick thing? Use only as directed flammable. Do not spray on heated surfaces. Wait, isn't that what you do with olive oil though? Like when you just take the bottle and you like, then you do that in the pan? Is it just don't spray it when the surface is hot, spray it before and then heat up the, I'm assuming. Anyway, oil is, yes, very high calorie, pure fats, but it's like a Tic Tacs, right? If you make the serving size a Tic Tac, you can just round down to zero. Did you know Tic Tacs are sugar free and have zero calories? Pretty crazy. You could eat an entire room full and you wouldn't gain a pound. They would evaporate inside of you. It's wild. Same with this. I love the 473 servings per container though, which means that you could just continuously spray this for like two minutes. That's kind of cool, right? Just psh, two minutes worth. That's quite a lot. And probably a lot of calories to go with it, but. <laughs> Oh man, economy airline seat as a 6'4", 225 pound man. Couldn't relate. Wonder what that's like. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just, that's, it, it do be that way. It do be that way. I don't like flying places, but I guess, you know, one of the benefits of being four feet tall is that um, you, you don't have to worry quite as much about the, you know, leg room and side room, shoulder room, leaning your head back over the entirety of the headrest. Right? Tall people problems, right? Some convenient things about being short. There's some inconvenient things too, like not being able to reach things in the grocery store sometimes. But beside that, you know, some benefits for sure. Yeah, I, I would not want to be six foot four on an, on an airplane. Wouldn't be the best, but it kind of just is that way. Seems like a normal economy seat, just the way that they are. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching the last month of A-Hole Design. Make sure to like the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.